Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Have a seat and get this show rolling. What a great turnout. We have a great community, Murphy's, huh? We are. Yes, we do. Thank you for joining us at the park. What a great place to be. And so many friendly faces out there. We're going to have a good session this morning. We have some great guest speakers and some good questions have been coming in. Uh, Steve, thank you for organizing all of this. Steve Gonzalez, board member, provided all this, organized the whole thing. He's done a great job. We have some handouts. Please don't forget to stop by the table. And then during uh, the exiting and all of that, if you guys could please um, sign our um, sign-in sheet that uh, Jessica, taking notes. Thank you so much, Jessica. She'll have for you, if you could just sign your name and any contact information you would like to leave with us, that would be great. Good source of volunteering. Thank you all for that, too. I see many friendly faces out there. So I'll turn it over to Steve. He's going to do some introductions and enjoy the morning. Thank you, everybody. Move away from the microphone. I mean, the speaker. Now. Can you hear me now? Move forward, Steve, so you're not near the speaker. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, be careful what you wish for. Anyway, welcome to what we hope will be one of many town hall meetings. Um, we're going to talk about a few things up front. Uh, first of all, the catalyst. The primary catalyst that started the ball rolling for this meeting was an incident that happened on Scott Street. There was a concern that there was not enough uh, information being shared with the community. And we will uh, look into that incident in a few minutes as one of our questions. So uh, we will talk about that. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is to start a line of communication between the public and our local representatives. We receive numerous questions about different things that are of a concern to the public. While we cannot accommodate everyone scheduled to attend this meeting, we will try to have uh, more meetings at different times. Uh, we'll be discussing a multitude of issues. And will we solve all the problems? Probably not. But this is a step in the right direction. Uh, there are issues that we will be addressing. Hopefully we'll dispel some rumors that have been floating around. And please bear in mind that some questions will not be able to be answered due to ongoing invest investigations as well as privacy concerns. Uh, we have a few rules for the meeting. Um, first of all, uh, we have shared the questions that we have brought up with the speakers. The reason for doing that uh, there was a couple reasons. We, we're not here to blindside anybody. We uh, presented them with the questions because we wanted to have them let them have enough time to review the questions and then come back to us with good informational answers and hopefully avoiding any of the I'll have to get back to you responses. So we need everybody to be polite, treat one another with respect, avoid talking over one another, one another and try to avoid side conversations when others are speaking. Some of the logistics, we have waters right here if you're thirsty, the restrooms are over yonder, and we have a table here full of handouts and other things like that. Um, in the event of an earthquake, do what you got to do. <laughs> in the event of a fire, everybody get in the street. So anyway, we're going to start, start with something. <laughs> club member, it helps buy equipment like this. <laughs> so if you're not a community club member, become one. Uh, uh, community club membership, it supports the park. Uh, the park gets no funding except for our first Fridays and uh, events that we have, uh, rentals and such. So uh, whatever you do to help this park, it helps maintain this park. And it's a beautiful park and you can't really let it go down. Anyway, 
anyway, back to introductions. Uh, we have uh, Calaveras County Sheriff Rick Fusilio. Manuelos, the CHP commander. Yeah. Deputy Iron uh, Ian Sharp. <laughs> Benny Leela from the Calaveras County Juvenile Probation. <laughs> uh, don't boo. Marita Calloway. <laughs> incident. Uh, there are many rumors circulating around Murphy's about this in incident and some of the questions are what happened, were firearms confiscated, and is it true that the alleged assailant is underage and nothing can be done. So I will hand this over to Sheriff Rick and Sheriff Stark and Lieutenant Stark. So can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Right. Better. So I'll take these one as they come. So a lot of rumors circulating about the Murphy's incident. Uh, what happened? There's an incident where a gentleman was found on Main Street, Murphy's. The incident actually was reported to have happened on Scott Street. There's some confusion there. Um, there's a report of a home invasion and a battery that took place, a serious battery that took place with that also. Uh, within a few hours, we had detectives on scene, as well as deputies, interviewing witnesses, collecting statements, collecting evidence. And some of that evidence right now is up at the Department of Justice being analyzed uh, for further clues. I can tell you that all suspects in this case have been talked to or investigated. We're following all leads. Um, it's an ongoing investigation, so unfortunately we can't tell you a lot of the incident deal details about the case, but I can tell you that it's, the detectives are working on it. There's a specific detective assigned to it with other detectives helping him. Um, there's some compounding problems that we've had. Uh, the day after this incident, there was a, a murder that occurred, so that took up a bunch of the detectives' time, obviously, uh, but this is an active, ongoing investigation. Um, were firearms confiscated? No. No firearms were confiscated. We were unable to secure the residence, and with the permission of the victim, we took a firearm that was in the residence for safekeeping, so in case somebody broke back in, they wouldn't have access to this firearm. Since then, we've been in communication with the victim and told him the firearm's in our evidence room, more than welcome to come down at any time and pick it up. He has chosen not to do that at this time. Um, is it true that the alleged assailant is underage, nothing can be done? No matter what the age of the assailant, something can be done. We are going to finish this investigation. We're going to find out the truth as the evidence takes us. If it's a juvenile, they'll be held to answer. If it's an adult, they'll be held to answer. 
Uh, some of the other questions. Uh, what are the crime stats for Calaveras County? Uh, the top crimes, where are they occurring? And what is the best resource for being informed about crimes and incidents? I want to speak real quick to the social media posts that went out on this uh, incident. The incident occurred on Main Street because that's where we contacted the, su the, the victim. So when something like that occurs, we responded to Main Street, so the incident is reported on our uh, sheriff's logs on Main Street. So when we start getting calls that we're lying, and I hate that term, that we're trying to hide stuff, you don't understand. We respond to where the incident occurred. This incident occurred on Main Street, so our sheriff's log logged it as Main Street not at the victim's residence. So be very careful how you perceive things and how you listen to social media. Social media is a whirlwind of problems sometimes, and this is one of them. So what are the top crimes in Calaveras County? Calaveras County suffers from crime just like any other county. However, we are, however, we are lower in crime stats than most counties in the, in the, count, in the, excuse me, the state. Um, a lot of our general calls for service are 911 hang-ups, trespassing, general misdemeanor crimes. Some areas suffer from, you know, batteries on persons, things of that nature. Um, I put some stats over here on the table. Overall, Murphy's is quite low compared to Calaveras County stats, um, and that's in part to all the ex-patrols and the community um, involvement we have. There's been over 175 extra patrols specifically for Murphy's from the beginning of the year to I believe July 15th, where the deputy has specifically logged on with our dispatch, said they're either doing foot patrol or extra patrol in, in or around Murphy. It's 175 since January until the, about the 15th when I ran the stats. Um, that's not including driving up to Arnold to respond to a call or driving down, passing through town. Those are specific incidents of extra patrols in Murphy's, walking out, getting out, walking around. Uh, deputy Slarbs, our resident deputy, he makes it a point uh, every day on his shift when he's done answering calls for service. Uh, <laughs> How about now? Yay. More? Yeah. How about now? Yeah. 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 Now it's a meeting. So, <laughs> when he's not answering calls for service specifically, he's interacting with Murphy one way or another. Um, what are the best resources for being informed about crimes and incidents? So we post on our social media site on Facebook any major crime that happens. Um, we also use Everbridge or Nixle posting, and we also use Twitter. So if you guys want to follow us on the Sheriff's, Calaveras County Sheriff's Office, we post there frequently things are going on in the county. There's a question, why didn't we post this incident? Well, at that time, we weren't exactly sure what happened, who the suspects were, but we knew the detectives were on it, and until we had hard information, we weren't going to put out false information or information that could be incorrect. Because the last thing we want to do is put out something and then have to retract it. We want to make sure it's out there correctly. We had no idea that the rumor mill would start so quickly and so ferociously, um, but we've been trying to play catch up since then. Lesson learned. Um, We've reached out to the community park and we're looking at other avenues to post things to keep the public more informed. But we post fairly regularly to our sites. Do you allow responses back on Twitter? Uh, like we, tips we, or things? We, we review all comments that are on Facebook and Twitter. So what are the best resources to be informed about crimes? Uh, Facebook page. I'm also the uh, public information officer. So if anybody has any question about crime in Murphy's or in Calaveras County, call the office, ask for Lieutenant Stark, and I'll call you back. I fielded a call the other day. Uh, a lady called me and asked the status of a case. I called her back. I may not call you back right away, but I will call you back. And that goes for each and every person here. So we don't get a rumor mill and people feel unsafe and people feel worried for no reason. Um, give me a call and I will give you the exact truth of what's happening, what's going on, so you can be well informed. The last thing I want is for people to feel unsafe when there's no need for that. We have a lot of stuff going on in the world, and that's that's something we can we can stamp out. Here, here. Thank you. I believe the 
Next question is for uh, Tilly. Yeah. Turn up the volume a little, please. I don't want to touch it. I'll, break it. I'll speak louder. Louder. Oh, there. Hey. That's nice. Okay, so my name is Kelly Cowain. I am the Chief Administrative Director for the Resource Connection and the Director of the Calaveras Crisis Center and Children's Advocacy Center. So our main goal in that program is to um, provide resources and support for individuals who have experienced domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse. So I believe the first question for me was, is there a large number of sexual assaults in Calaveras County? And that's, that's kind of a hard question to answer. Um, so reported sexual assaults in the previous 12 months is about 12 for the county. And one of the statistics statewide, nationwide, for sexual assaults is that only 60% or 60% of survivors of sexual assault do not report the assault. Um, so you can extrapolate those numbers. Um, above and beyond what has been reported to the Sheriff's Department, we had about six additional individuals who reported um, current sexual assault. They don't always tell us where it happens. When we take statistical information, we find out the age of the person and kind of where they live um, and that kind of thing. We don't really make, we don't make them talk about where it happened unless they want to talk about that. So um, given 12 reported sexual assaults and five or six additional that are reported to us that don't talk to law enforcement, you would think that's not a very big number, but any number of sexual assaults is a problem in the community. And if you're looking at 60% are not reported, then yeah, there's probably an issue. Um, are they all, are most of them happening in Murphy's? No, I don't think so. When we look at our stats, usually it's other bigger, more populated areas of the co uh, county that we see more sexual assaults, but it kind of ebbs and flows depending on what's going on. Um, when there's a lot of tourists in an area, sometimes those stats will go up. Um, it'll go down when there's less. So, you know, it's really a hard question to answer. The next question, is it true that date rape drugs are being used in Calaveras County? Well, what I can say is I am not an expert on date rape drugs. And, but what I have heard is they're very, very hard to track. It's very hard to figure out whether that is in someone's system. And having said that, we do have people who report that they think that they might have been drunk, but there has been no confirmation of those reports. And so that's where the rumor mill starts again. You know, somebody feels like that might have happened to them, and they're talking about their experience, but if it hasn't been confirmed, it's hard to say whether or not it's being used. I know that that type of sexual assault does happen a lot in all the communities, unfortunately. And you could argue that alcohol could be considered a date rape drug. So we all just have to be really careful. Um, one of the resources that I brought today, oh, you're really helpful. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Over on the table there is, um, these are coasters that people can actually test their drinks. So there's two little circles here. You can take your straw and pull up some of your drink, your beverage and you can put it on this coaster, and if it changes color, it is probably not safe to drink. It's not gonna tell you what exactly is in it, but if it changes to, I think it's a dark blue, yeah, dark blue, don't drink it. You know, we, there's all kinds of things people can put in your drink that aren't safe. There's a whole bunch of them over there. There's um, bigger ones that have a little more information, but they have our information, our hotline number, our address with the Murphy's office, you can take these if you serve alcohol or any beverage at your business. Please feel free to grab a bundle. I think there's a hundred in a bundle. Um, and you can have those available to keep people safe. We also brought... These can go in your business. They have information on the resources available if somebody has experienced sexual assault and or domestic violence. They're small cards, so if you have dressing rooms or you have bathrooms. We have them for men and for women both. It would be really easy if someone didn't want anyone to know that they took the information to grab these little cards. They don't say our name on them, they just have our phone number. They could stick them in their pocket or their bra or you know wherever is safe and then they can have that information if they need it. 
and those are free to take. We have a lot more if anybody wants them. I know that my staff has been talking to different businesses in Murphy's about whether or not they can have them available, and, and uh, you guys have been really open to having that information. So that, that moves on to that question about resources. So there are lots of resources for people who have experienced sexual assault in particular, um, and I think the biggest resource is support in the community. There, there is socially a bias, um, it seems, and it's how we have been brought up, that people who have, especially women who have been sexually assaulted, somehow it was their fault. They were dressed wrong, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, they had too much to drink, and my opinion is that shouldn't matter. People should not be forcing people to do things with their body that they don't give consent. And um, someone who is under the influence cannot give consent because you're not thinking the right way, right? So in a community like this, if you're gonna say, we don't want sexual assault to happen in this community, and I think that's what you're saying because I have heard it a lot, help people make their stay here and their visit here safe. Provide these resources, watch out, be aware. Um, if someone is, is wandering around and they look like they're disoriented, check in on them or call law enforcement and have them check in on them or refer them to our office. We're right next to the poor house. So and any of you who would like to come in and see our office, you're welcome. We have lots of resources. We can help people with restraining orders. We can help people if they need to get a hold of law enforcement, if they need to get an exam, we can set all that up. But the, the start of it is you as a community saying, no, we don't want Murphy's to be a bad experience for anybody. Not someone who lives here, not someone who's visiting here. And we're gonna provide the resources and we're gonna watch and we're gonna stay informed and we're not gonna be afraid to talk about it. And we're not gonna be afraid to ask questions and we're not gonna be afraid to put our hand out. And for me, I think that that is a great prevention for the community. I think there was a one more question. How to how to reach out, the best way to reach out? Yeah, best way to make contact. Best way to make contact. So if you believe somebody has been um, a victim of sexual assault, I would just ask them if they're okay. Ask them um, if they would like to talk to somebody. If they want to talk to somebody, you can give them our phone number. You can ask them if you could call law enforcement. I don't think it's a situation where you want to try and handle it yourself. I think you get them to a safe place and you get them the resources that they need based on what they want. You can't force somebody to report it. It's, it can be super humiliating and, and people don't want to report for many reasons. They don't have to report to get our services. So um, become familiar with where Great Crisis Center is in your community and refer people there. So just to talk a little bit more about that, um, we work really well with the Resource Connection. Um, a couple of our detectives are going with some of Kelly's staff to a special conference uh, for training and additional uh, resources. Uh, we meet with her frequently, and one of our detectives is going to be is handles nothing but sexual assault crimes against children. So we work really well together. Um, just to touch on something she said, there's about 12 reported a year, six that don't come to us. We take the stance that one's too many. One is way too many for this community in this county. Um, our deputies are going to be doing bar checks, making sure that we walk through, we're going to be handing these out, and we're going to make these really known that Calaveras County is not the place to engage in this. No place is, but we're going to make sure that we're going to happen. So the next question is, does a crime need to be serious to get a response from the Sheriff's Department? No. I encourage people to report all crimes. All crimes need to be reported to the Sheriff's Office. Um, we have a Sheriff's technician that evaluates all calls for service. They're quantified and we have what we call hotspot policing. We give this hot sheet out to our deputies. It gives the top places in the county where crimes are occurring, the top persons who are committing those crimes. That allows them to use their limited free time on patrol to target areas and yes, to target people who are doing crime in our county. They can stop, they can move away, they go to jail. Those are their choices. So by working smarter, not harder, we're using analyticals to put our people out in the best position possible to either intercept, stop, or prevent crime. So please report all crime. Do not report an in-progress crime 
or a crime of serious nature to our online reporting. That's for something that maybe somebody, you know, minor vandalism or minor misdemeanors. Threats specifically against your, your bodily harm should be reported to 911. Um, those reports are triaged. So the records department goes through those when they put online because they're generally supposed to be, you know, non-life-threatening calls. They're put through a process and then they're reviewed by a sergeant. And if a deputy needs to go out and review them or send a deputy out for follow-up, that'll also happen. So serious crime, somebody's attacking you, attacking somebody else, or, you know, something serious, call 911. If not, report all crimes to 754-6500. We want all crimes reported. That'll give us the best picture we have so we can deploy our resources more efficiently. What is the information most vital for reports? Um, we don't want to put anybody in harm's way, but the more information you can give us, the better. If you see somebody doing something wrong of a serious nature and you call 911, they're going to ask you what type of car it is. So when the deputy is responding, they drove away in a car, okay? Well, they drove away in a blue car. That even narrows our search. They drove away in a blue Ford Taurus with, you know, a right quarter panel that's damaged. That takes all the cars in the world down to a very specific car that we can go look for and find. So the more information you can get, the better, without putting yourself in harm's way. Obviously, license plates, pictures, things of that nature, but don't get hurt getting those. Um, security film, make sure you have security around your home, security systems, cameras that are pushed offline or into the cloud for retrieval later, all those are very helpful. We take any information we can to make the biggest picture we can to get the best prosecution. And then the next one I think the sheriff's going to take um, regarding rights versus community rights. Uh, to reiterate a little bit of what uh, Lieutenant Stark just said about uh, reporting crimes, they're all important. Every, every crime that is committed in this community is important to us, and that's our job. That's what you pay us to do, and we want to be able to do that. So if you hear something, say something. If you hear a dog that's barking nonstop and it's unusual, call us. A barking dog might mean that your neighbor's house is being broken into or who knows what's going on. So I hear a lot of people say that. Well, we don't know if we should report it. Report it. Please do. That's what we're here for. You're not bothering us. But we like to take those calls. Um, as far as, uh, it says, sometimes people think that they can park, camp, and stay as long as they want, wherever they want. <laughs> well, and unfortunately, that is true. We have a lot of people that think that. The problem is, in 2018, there was a law passed by a governor. I don't know which governor it was, but it was a law passed that is called the Right to Rest Law. Meaning that if somebody wanted to come into this park and spend the night, the sheriff's office cannot make them leave. If they want to go over to the Black Bart and park in that parking lot and camp, we cannot make them leave. It is private property, but it's open to the public. It has caused a lot of problems. How many people have driven down Highway 99 and seen people camp along the side of the freeways? or anywhere you drive nowadays, you're seeing people camped along the roadways. It's because it's open to the public. So we are limited. So what we need from our private park persons that own properties is to give us what we call a 602 letter. It's a no trespass letter. If you own some property and you don't want people camping on your property, write a letter, talk to Sergeant or Lieutenant Stark, he can get you the format basically says that we don't want people camping on our property. The problem is in California that after 14 days, they have established residency. Now you have to evict them from your property. So I hear a lot of moaning, but now you understand our side of the coin. When you call me and say, hey, Sheriff, this guy's camped on my property, get him out of here. Give me a 602 letter. Give me some, some ammunition to get him out of there. So we can do our job with your help. But we have to work together to get this done correctly. Um, so that is a big issue. Um, the rights versus the community rights. Uh, their rights are, they have a right to rest. 
If they want to sleep on the park bench over there, they can sleep on that park bench. We need those letters to stop them from doing that. Um, the homelessness that is going on in our state right now is unprecedented. Uh, I don't know how many people follow Governor Newsom. Uh, he made a comment the other day that, hey folks, we're gonna build more homeless shelters, so send your homeless to California. He is inviting more homeless into our state. We see people coming into this community and not so much up here, more down in the Valley Springs area because it's closer to the valley, that are coming up from Lodi's and wherever else they're coming from because we have a nice area, people are nice to them, and they're staying around, they're not going away. And it makes it difficult for us. Um, we have somebody that was camping underneath the Creekside Bridge over here. We've been working our tails off to get them out of there. Problem is, it's public property. Now I know that the property owner that owns some of that property has been working with us to get them removed from there. We have a place in Valley Springs. It's underneath Highway 12. State owns that property. The state came in and said, yeah, we're not going to touch it. They can stay there. There's nothing we can do. They're camped along the side of Highway 12 going out of Valley Springs now. It makes it very difficult. Again, reiterate, if you own a piece of property and somebody is staying on your property, get a hold of us. We'll get a 602 letter, a no trespassing letter, put it on file, and we can make the people move. Don't wait the 14 days. It can becomes a non-private non person like the park or the library have a 602 letter? No, that's the problem because it's open to the public. It's open to anybody at any time. Now, if it was completely fenced and gated to where you could close it at night, that's a different ball game. So we're, we're limited as to what we can do. But we don't have a problem with our deputies coming down here and saying, hey, what are you doing here, buddy? <laughs> time to move on. So we, we do do that, and we can do that, but technically I can't arrest him and make him leave. That's the problem. So just so everybody understands, the, the right to rest law has caused a lot of problems for law enforcement throughout the state. Marita. Marita. This one's for you. I'll start to address it, though. It's about the um, having a uh, substation, right? Is that the one? Yes. Yeah, putting a substation in Murphy's. Um, we have a substation in Arnold, we have one in West Point, we have one in Valley Springs, we have one in Copperopolis, and they are manned by our sheriff's volunteers. Uh, and they're awesome, thank you. Um, our volunteers do a lot, uh, you'll see them out driving around a lot. Uh, they'll do residence checks for you, so if you're going to go on vacation, you can get online, fill out a form, and they will go by and check on your residence while you're gone on vacation. Um, as far as the substation, we utilize um, Murphy's Fire right now. Um, you'll see a car parked there every now and again. Uh, the deputies will stop and use the restroom, make a phone call, meet with a victim, meet with a suspect, hopefully. Um, so we do utilize the Murphy's Firehouse right now. To put a substation downtown Murphy's, you're not going to see a deputy there all the time. We, the deputies don't use the substations, but for maybe to use the restroom and to make a phone call. And most everybody's got a cell phone now, so they make the phone calls from their vehicles. Uh, so I, I don't want you to get the perception that if you put a substation in here in town, you're gonna see a, a deputy sitting here all the time. There was a time right across the street over here, we had a substation that we were utilizing, but we don't utilize it. We're, we're out and about. We're we're more effective about driving around and responding to calls than sitting inside of an office. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's just, that's reality. Uh, we're better off being out and about. So to put a substation in, in, in town, we can certainly look at it, we can entertain it. It would probably be manned by a sheriff's volunteer, so if you had questions, you wanted to get some paperwork, you, you can more than certainly do that but I don't want people to think that you're gonna be seeing a deputy in there all the time because you won't. It, it just, it's not gonna happen. Hey, you wanna to add to that, Marita? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you talk about the CARES Act, though. Good try, Mr. Morton. Didn't probation come before me? No. 
Mm. Okay. I know there is a perception of what a substation can do. I think the sheriff would be willing to talk about it. The funding for a substation would come out of the sheriff's budget. She'll give me more money for it. <laughs> Not. Um, but if the community would like to get together with Lieutenant Stark and talk about the possibility and the location, um, we'd be open to that. I want to reiterate what the sheriff said. The perception of what it can do and what it will do is not the same. So, as the sheriff said, we'd rather have the resident deputy out in the community than we would have the resident deputy sitting in an office. And the volunteers are not always available. So this is a pitch for if you'd like to be a volunteer deputy, they are accepting them. But you do have to go through background checks. So that's why I'm not one. <laughs> so the question for me, Sheriff? So what is CARES funding and can it be used for a substation? No, CARES funding cannot be used for a substation. We did receive four point, about six or nine million dollars of CARES funding. CARES funding was used to in essence help um, health and human services and public safety and to set up protocols for COVID-19. It was all COVID-19 delivered. The American Rescue Act, uh, we hopefully will receive 8.5 or $6 million from that, but we haven't applied. We will be applying next month to see if we will get the funds for that. Who's next? Here, I'll let you read this, because some of this pertains to you. So the primary ways the recovery funds can be used is very COVID driven. It's for public health. It's for the economics for businesses. If they need it, the details um, are still a little vague. Um, but we will be having a public meeting on that when we apply for the funds next month. So if you're interested, I mean, you could listen, come to board meeting, or ask me at the grocery store. So, <clears throat> um, where else? What do you want, Steve? Who goes next? Uh, I think the next one's for us. So the next question is... Police presence in Murphy's, I covered that a little bit, 175 uh, extra patrols specifically for Murphy's. Uh, it seems there's concern about, oh, well, it's Murphy's, some businesses allowed to do whatever they want without oversight, um, drinks being allowed to be taken in the streets. So Calaveras County has no open container law. If somebody comes to the park and opens up a bottle of wine and walks around the streets of Murphy's, there's nothing we can do about it. If a place or business, Murphy's Hotel, any of the wineries, fronts, serve those drinks are to be consumed when they come or excuse me when they leave that establishment before they leave so what's being done about that deputies during their patrols if they see somebody out with an open container nothing they can do about it if they're a problem if they're stumbling we try to get them a friend get them taken home whatever the oh well it's murphy's that's not accurate a while ago i was asked what happens if somebody comes into my my store and they're intoxicated and i don't want them here the reply was, you can ask them to leave, you can call the sheriff's office, we'll deal with it. The spirit of the conversation went towards, that's what people do. People come to Murphy's to enjoy the great wines and wineries, and they partake in drinking alcohol. If they push the limit too far, that's what we're here for. So we coordinate with Alcohol Beverage Control to make sure that people finish their alcohol drinks before they go. Alcohol Beverage Control has come up here in the undercover capacity to make sure that's being enforced. Great strides have been made from the days when I started 27 years ago, when it was fights at night on Main Street in front of the hotel. Those don't happen as much anymore. Do bad things happen? Yes. But we're working to curtail those. So the, oh well, it's Murphy's, that's not, that's not accurate. Yes, ma'am. Merchants post a sign that says no outside food or drink. Is that adequate? 
Merchants can post whatever they want. It's the no shoot, no no shirt, no shoes, no service, no outside drinks, no outside food. It's your store. You set the rules you want for your store. We'll enforce them. They get unruly with you. You call us. We'll take care of it. That's what we're here for. We don't want anybody to put themselves in a bad way and get hurt. So a specific patrol would be the deputy comes into town, parks his vehicle or her vehicle, and they're specifically there to patrol Murphy's. They're not taking a call for service. They're not investigating anything particular. Uh, they're either on foot. They'll do bar checks. They'll get out and literally walk through the bar and make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Their time spent is specifically to look for and prevent criminal activity in Murphy's. That's what the extra patrol is about. What I'm not... It, it can last from anywhere from, you know, five minutes to a half hour. But during that time, if that deputy or they get a call for service, they're going to leave and go take care of that call for service. That doesn't include, one sec, sir. That doesn't include the deputy driving through town to another spot. It's specific activity for Murphy. Yes, sir. Yeah, can I own a business in Murphy? This last Saturday, this is not typical. This last Saturday, we had two people so drunk in our trial. We were a loud. I'm caught in between a situation not a certain but I don't want to myself confront him because that could get really stupid. What I hope for, and I think other people in this community do too, you can do all the patrols you want on a Tuesday. We want you guys here on Saturday afternoon. We want you to stop these people dumping around drugs. People are getting into vehicles plastered. And that's a possibility of a you know, horrible accident. I know how hard you guys work. Don't get me wrong. I'm very supportive of the police department. I just think there needs to be more direction. Maybe just a Saturday from, I don't know, noon until 6 or something. Uh, I know when we have the dog jump officers that are out there, and they're out there for a reason. And they do a great job. But we don't see you guys. We really don't see you guys on Saturday. And if I'm wrong, so the question was, or the statement was, um, more intoxicated people in the businesses um, possibly causing problems, maybe getting in the cars where they've been drinking. Um, so I'll say, and then the other part with that, can we be here more on Saturdays? We'll buy you a horse. We'll buy you a horse. <laughs> Palomino? So to, to answer your question, call the sheriff's office when that happens. When there's somebody belligerent, when there's somebody belligerent in your store, you don't have to make it grand like... I'm going to call the sheriff's department, excuse yourself, call the sheriff's department, and we will come and we will deal with them. If we don't know their crime is occurring, we can't be there. We cannot be at all places at all times. So call us, tell us where they are. When they're about to get in the car, you see them get in the car. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. On Main Street on a Saturday afternoon, that would help us a whole lot. So, so I will answer that with, if you see somebody get in the car, give us the license plate number and the description of the car, and we will pull them over. We cannot be everywhere at once. The deputy that works this beat works from Douglas, or Douglas Flat all the way up to the county line in, in excuse me, in uh, um, Alpine. If the deputy in Copperopolis, I see you one second, needs assistance, he's the first to respond down there. We have four on, sometimes five to six a shift. We cannot be all places at once. That's why it's imperative that if you see something, like the sheriff says, you say something, and we will come and we will take care of it. Sir? Okay, so he's mentioned the extra patrol. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay, extra patrol. 174 since 2015. In the math, that's less than one a day. Okay? It wasn't that long ago, Jim, when you were on a bike. You were on a bicycle with your buddy patrolling Main Street just like this gentleman just said. Okay, we had highway patrol guys, two of them, parked. Okay, this is a different community on weekends. This is when I think the gentleman was asking. That's where we need your help, not not reactively, proactively. Now I understand there's budgets and all of that. Is that even possible anymore? No. <laughs> it's not. Po it's not possible because we don't have the manpower. We have one guy that works this area, and like Lieutenant said, if we have a call down to Copperopolis and my deputy's getting his ass beat down there, he's going to have to drive down there to help him out. Or if we have another type of a call, what is that it's station? unfortunate that Murphy's has. I don't want to say the problems, but it's unfortunate that the people come up from the valley and they do drink and they do drive. CHP monitors as much as they can also. Our deputies do as much as we can. The problem is I don't have a guy that can be parked here in Murphy's 
on a Saturday. It's just not possible. So if I take that person and park him here in Murphy's, now what happens to all the people at White Pines that are doing the same thing? I, I, I can't cover it all. It's just not possible. How do we help you get an office? Volunteer. Here? What can we do as citizens to help you? Not you know, this town changes on Saturday. I, I know it does, and so does Arnold. Arnold changes on Saturdays, um, and right now my guys are covering all the way into Bear Valley because all the Alpine County deputies are over fighting that fire in Nevada right now in their county. So we're actually covering clean into Bear Valley now and beyond. So what you can do to help, I don't know. Here, here's the problem that we've had. This county in the sheriff's office has always been a training ground. I know you've heard me say this before in the past. The, the, the deputies come up here, they go to work, they work for a couple years, and then they go down into the valley where they can double their money. Our county cannot afford to pay these guys 50, 60 bucks an hour like they do down in the valley. It's just not going to happen. I can beg and plead to, Mer to Merida all day long, but the budget will not handle it. it. It just won't. So we end up being a training ground. We have a young crew. And I don't mind taking the lumps from the sheriff's office if we do or don't do something. That's what I'm here for. i got pretty big shoulders. I can take that. If we have a problem internally with a guy who doesn't respond to a call, I'll deal with that. The problem I'm having is that we're getting beat up because of something that I have no control over. I don't know what we can do. We've talked about this at many town halls before. Um, it, it's, it's about money, and it's about what these younger kids want to do. Now, you got to understand, they're going to come up here and start out making 25 26 bucks an hour. They can start out at Stockton at 46 to $50 an hour. A little bit of a difference. Yeah. Not only is that a difference right now in their paycheck, but that's a difference in their retirement down the road. So it, it's just it's a vicious cycle that we have going on up here. And it's not just us. Amador has the same problem, Tuolumne, Mariposa, all the Mountain Valley or Mountain Community Sheriff's offices have that problem. You get down into the valley, they're gonna make more money. So the key to answer your question directly, we need more people on the streets. That's the bottom line. But I'm down five guys right now. Marita and the board just gave me two more persons to add to my staff. I can't get them hired fast enough because they either retire. We've had people actually, hang on sis, we've actually had people quit the sheriff's office because they don't want to be in law enforcement anymore. Okay, we've had people that have retired. We had a kid go through the academy. We paid him to go through the academy six months long. The day he hit the streets, yeah, no, I don't want to do this anymore, and set his gun down on the desk and left. Being a cop right now is a tough, difficult time, and people don't want to do it. So getting qualified people that want to work is very difficult. But the bottom line is adding people. And Marita and the board has helped me in that aspect. I'm trying to put together what we call an EB deputy, because we have the county split up into four corners, and I want to have a fifth beat so that when... The guy in Copperopolis has a problem. We're not having to pull the guy out of Arnold and Murphy's. We're working towards that, but it's going to take some time. So I am working with the board. The board's working with me to get that position, those positions forward. So we're gaining on it. That's all I can tell you at this time. Um, yes, ma'am. So <clears throat> one of the things that the highway patrol used to do is they would build a car. Not a real car, just a cutout of a car. <laughs> and they would move it around. And it was amazing how that controlled traffic. It, it's, a, it's a really low-cost, old-fashioned thing to do. But it creates people just seeing, oh my god, there's a car, and they start paying more attention. It, it's a low-cost thing to do, and I know it's a little hokey, but I kind of feel like we're pretty fucking desperate. <laughs> Okay. Well, good morning, first of all. Uh, my name is uh, Lieutenant Mayo Benwellis. I go by Mayo. So, first of all, thank you and uh, uh, Supervisor Callaway for inviting me for this town hall meeting. It's uh, very nice to see this whole community come here together. So it shows that everybody really cares about this community and work, uh, working with all the partner agencies here to hopefully solve problems, right, and make everybody happy. Um, I'll talk about the traffic um, and the issues about DUIs and things that you just the, the I'll answer your question shortly, but just to have an idea what the Highway Patrol's mission, what we do, is our, our job is to provide the highest uh, level of safety and service to everybody in California, right? And our vision is to make the California the safest place to live, work, and travel. Uh, that means we want to make these roadways safer, 
uh, through enforcement, engineering, and education. Uh, enforcement's a big thing. I'm all about enforcement. MV Patrol, just like the sheriff said, um, I'd rather have our guys on an MV Patrol than sitting in an office. MV Patrol, you're out there, you're showing the paint. That's going to change driver behavior and hopefully save lives. Um, education, we try to put out messages on social media. Uh, we have the, um, now that COVID hopefully will slow down, bring up back the uh, Start Smart for the younger crowd that are the new drivers that are being involved in these collisions. Uh, the age well for the older drivers um, for education. And engineering, what we do is if we're out there, our guys are patrolling our, our staff, <coughs> and they see any issues with roadways, we'll notify Caltrans or County Roads with Scott, the superintendents, to make notifications of any in engineering, in engineering issues that we think that contributed to a crash or are dangerous to take care of the roadways as well. Um, as far as, I'll answer your question, ma'am. I've never heard, I've been on the highway patrol for almost 19 years. I've never heard. Oh, this is older than 19. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 and uh, I, I, I've seen what you're talking about in some smaller agencies, like Escalon, they have an old Crown Victoria. That, that's just to change the driver behavior, like, you're, like I yeah. mentioned. Yeah. But it slows down, but people eventually will, will realize it's just a dummy sitting there. Yeah, so that's yeah. good, but we don't, we don't have, we, we won't, we, the CCP's not going to enter, won't even do that anytime soon that I know of. Um, Highway Patrol. It okay. Would be the sheriff's department. It could be a community club event. It, it would just be a low cost start because I know we have no, a I, I get it. issues. Yeah. It's well, entrapment. Yeah. A slick lawyer stop that. Yeah. That's, That's why they can't do that anymore. Yeah. No, it's they have to be visible to be parked on the side of the road that to do radar busy. and that. Yeah. It's, it's in the patrol. That put in the dummy car. Some slick lawyer beat that in court and got the people off. So, so I'll give you an idea of this uh, MV Patrol. I'll let everybody know here that August 3rd, we're actually doing a, a statewide uh, corridor of saturation on State Route 4. So all hands on deck, all my staff will be working 24 hours on State Route 4, zero tolerance. So August 3rd, from um, our area, Alpine's kind of busy right now, um, Tahoe, but through Modesto, Tracy, and Coco, we got to report our stats. Uh, to our bosses in Sacramento, and they're doing that statewide. They'll do their their different corridors like 99, I-5. Fatalities are up. I'll give you a, on on that third. We're doing that zero tolerance. We all get together, state statewide through uh, the um, surrounding areas, and just uh, zero tolerance on that state route. So everybody, uh, state route four on the third. <laughs> and, and, and this is truly what the most important thing is that we all have to take care of each other. We have to um, correct our own driving behaviors. If we're in a car with a family member that's on the phone, or uh, reemphasize and educate them about the distracted driving. It's so easy nowadays because of the social media technology that everybody's doing it. I'm in my unmarked car, and I'll come up to an intersection, and what's everybody doing in that red light? They're looking at their phone. I can't stop everybody in my unmarked car. I'll give you an example. I have in my unmarked car stop DUI drivers. If I see a car weaving pretty bad, I'll turn on my lights and I'll stop them. I already had a couple. Pretty bad. Very, very intoxicated. To answer your question, sure, the best thing to do is um, if you see this intoxicated person get in the vehicle, you, you call 911 from your cell phone, say, I want to report a drunk driver who's belligerent, got, got in a uh, Dodge Charger, provide the license plate, description of travel, where it took off. There's case law that allows our officers to stop a vehicle. If you report a car that's DUI and it's traveling, the, um, say, 10 minutes away or going towards us and the officer locates the vehicle, the officer can make that stop to determine if there's any influence or not. So just keep that in mind. You can always pick up the phone and call 911 to report a drunk driver. Our staff will copy and will respond to try to locate these drunk Does drivers. Does the Highway Patrol still issue a letter? If I'm on Parrots Ferry Road and somebody passes me across a double yellow line, there are curves everywhere, can I report that and still get a letter sent to that person? Yes, sir. I'm actually, I was going to bring that up uh, on my talking points. Okay. I've already, since I've been here in this command, we've got, I mean, uh, you're out there, your eyes on, on the roadways, you see something. Don't take any action. There'll be no vigilante. Just call it in. Like that that, that vehicle that you called in. You could call it in 911. Get the information down. Our officers will copy. If they're in the area, they'll try to make the stop and find the vehicle. If not, you can call the office. Uh, talk to your supervisor or myself. Call our, our CP San Andreas area. I'll give everybody the phone number if you don't have it. And say, hey, I, this vehicle is driving too reckless. This is a description of it. Get us the license plate because that's how I'll be able to at least send a letter to the registered owner. We don't know who the driver is. We're not going to take any enforcement action. But at least we'll send a letter to say, hey, we got eyes on you. And the community, you guys, also got eyes on other uh, drivers that are violating the law and endangering everybody. So, yes, we do that. 
Yeah, I just wanted to say that passing on the double yellow is getting worse and worse in this county. It's really bad. We were coming from uh, we were coming from the Bear Valley Music Festival and Saturday night, and a white pickup passed us on a double yellow in the dark, yeah. and we couldn't get any information. But you know, okay. going forward, I'll report it. You yeah, know, no, just, please call call it an M11. Also, if, if some of you live in, uh, go ahead, ma'am. I have a question. Why, when you do a controlled uh, DUI check? give the location and the time. I've heard many people say they know it's there and they're not going to go down that road. So just like he said about this case law, this case law that we have to actually uh, disclose, we're going to uh, that we have to notify that we're going to have a DUI checkpoint within four hours of the actual DUI checkpoint. We got to provide the location. We actually have to give them an escape route. That's just in the law that we have to do it, and we have to report this at the end. Seems kind of a huge point there. Oh, there's a we're still catching. We actually still get them. Hey Steve, you got a question? I, that I don't know. Not in our county, anyhow. Okay. I know, you know, on the weekends when we have our grape stomp and our Irish days, and even when we have concerts out at your venue, we pay extra uh, overtime to guys to be out and about because we know that we're going to have that huge influx. Um, but to try and do it every every weekend for this community, if I did it for here, I'd have to do it for Arnold. I'd have to do it all over the place. No, what I'm asking is about is private there's security. Some private security that the community could say, all right, we want something more that would work directly with you and be on the street from nine to six on Saturday. You can certainly look into that as a community, as business owners. You can do that. They do them in uh, the, the malls. Yeah. So yeah, it can be done. So yeah, I just want to add a question over here. Over here. Who had a question? First of all, I want to thank you for all you do. I am a retired CERT community emergency response team. And why not call CERT in where we've been trained, you know, highly efficiently trained, um, to help you. So in situations where there isn't enough people, call us in, make use of us. Also, what about um, community watches? What if we got together and started some more community watches? Can you repeat the question? So, so if, I, if I heard you correctly, you were talking about community projects, um, lack of a better term, neighborhood watch. Cert. So, and what you want? What did you want Cert to do? So when we utilize non-sworn personnel, we utilize our own um, volunteers, our sheriff volunteers, they're very active. Um, and I would urge if somebody wanted to be part of CERT, have CERT contact me and we'll see what offer what, what they can offer. And we might be able to implement that. That's something we can definitely look into. John? Just a question on that. Um, I know you have the volunteer program. Could Murphy's subsidize a volunteer car, you know, the cost of it and have it circulating for just the weekends so repeat the question so the question was can 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 murphy's get together and basically fund a volunteer car via yeah the sheriff's office? i mean you already have the program but that way it would pay for enhanced uh presence in murphy's without a dedicated program or you know so the maybe issue, what steven was the saying. issue with that really isn't the personnel um or the, excuse me the vehicle it's the personnel okay um we're we're at the mercy of our volunteers who um, the volunteers, so we really can't tell them when the work. We can tell them when the workload is happening, um, but we need more volunteers. So if we can work with CERT or any other community agency out there that wants to partner with us, give me a call. We can look into that. One second, sir. Um, and just to circle back, I don't think we touched on enough. Yes, we would love to have a deputy on Main Street Murphy's and every Main Street in Calaveras County and stop all crime. It's not that point right now. So when I say call us, we will come. Okay, so I don't want you to think we don't care, we don't, you know, we don't, it's not that we don't want somebody on Main Street or everywhere in Calaveras, we just don't have the power, the manpower, so please call us, and we will be there. Can I ask okay. questions? Uh, one sec, just let you have first. Yes, ma'am. Slow it down and be a little bit more respectful of our laws. I can tell you they 
look just like the sheriff's office. They look just like an officer in the law. Okay? They are representing our county and they help to make the rules what they need to be. And if you guys are wanting to be a part of it and, and instead of being part of the problem, be a part of the resolution, guess what? The volunteer sheriff's department will be gravitate. So so on that note, we don't have any volunteers take enforcement action. So they're they're enhanced eyes and ears. They'll they'll be a visible presence. People don't really, they see a patrol car, they don't take the time to read all the letters on it. They see Calgary Sheriff, they don't read all the way to volunteer, so it does deter crime. But we don't have them take enforcement action. They will do minor traffic enforcement, or excuse me, traffic assistance, but they don't do anything um, of a citation nature. Yes, sir. What do I do about my property? I have a problem seven days a week, every week out of the month. I live right here. There's drunk people, there's people that want to fight me every day because they're parking in my parking lot. I understand the fact that the highway patrol takes over that, but from the time that you get to my house, they're gone. So, so I'll tell you, the question, the statement was, every, uh, seven days a week, drunk and disorderly conduct, illegal parking next to the spot. What I will tell you is, call us when it happens. Do not engage with them. Do not put yourself in physical harm. We will triage our calls. If the deputy is not actively handling a call for service that's of higher nature, or somebody beating somebody up actively, we will come. Okay. Well, I had a guy grab me around the neck, and I have a broken neck. Well, uh, so, to, to that, know, don't the, don't engage with him. I don't. Don't. But they engage with me. Well, they don't, actually come after me. Don't put yourself in that situation. Okay. Stay inside. Call nine one one. Call the sheriff's office. We I will call you every week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> downtown, and I monitor everything by just simply walking. But keep it up. And I, I come to the park every night, as Carol knows, at 11 o'clock. I kick people out very nicely. I just tell them that the park is closed. At but but don't don't put yourself in a bad way. Oh, I'm not. I'm okay. Not, I'm just, I don't tell them to leave. Can I, I just say the park is closed. Yes. And, and I leave it up to you at that point. Okay. Yeah, um, are there going to be some reshuffling of fundings? With the police enforcement, for instance, calls for mental health people or people that are homeless, that will get off of your shoulders and more onto some strike team or something in the future. And also, just real quick, with the COVID money, will any problems that have become up with drugs and stuff, that they're at the core of some of our crime, will that money somehow be able, Marita, to to shuffle into the law enforcement to help with crime and and obviously the mental health and the other thing to get give them some more time to do their thing because three or four of you guys come out to a mental health call right. or so the, the question or statement was um will there be a mental health task force that goes out and handles mental health issues uh homeless. to alleviate the deputies and homeless um so i can tell you at this time right now there's no official funding on the horizon for that but what i can tell you is we have a dedicated mental health worker that works with us in our office and she will respond to calls to service with deputies. Um, the sheriff brought that on a couple of years ago. Um, she works in the evening hours. Sometimes we'll show up to a call and maybe the person's in some type of crisis. Instead of taking them to the hospital or, or you know, washing our hands of it, we can contact that person immediately with a trained professional, mental health professional, uh, either get them on the phone or bring that professional to the situation or bring them to the, to the spot and have them get immediate help. Um, and also drug-related issues causing well, crime. Drug-related issues. And money for COVID. They kind of, mental health and drug-related issues kind of blur lines, but if it's a clear mental health issue, we do have staff available to respond to that without having to refer them, and hopefully they show up on Monday. No, we take it. As soon as we get it, we send somebody. We're getting more money. Oh, more money. oh yeah. She could do that. Under this uh, 8.5 million or whatever it is, So why can't some of that be used to help out the sheriff's department? Right. Either pay you guys more so you can keep staff. So, yeah. She asked about the $8 million for the um, it's basically CARES Act funding for COVID. Uh, that can't be sent to anybody. It has to be used specifically for COVID-related issues. It's got nothing to do with the sheriff's office. They're not giving us free money. The state won't do that. Well, she, so. can. she can allot it to you. Well, she can't because she's still accountable. It has to be used for COVID-related stuff like uh, personal protective equipment and stuff like that. It cannot be used for personnel. It, it can't be used yeah. for any of that but stuff. But drugs and crime have gone up because of it, I think. We could make it. Well, that's something you have to talk to your governor about. I will. <laughs> you got his personal number? If not, I'll yeah, give it to I you. I will. I got it. Uh, qualifications for being a volunteer are show up. Um, you'll have to do a background check. We want to make sure that you're not a convicted 
sex offender or something, but uh, it's a quick background check, just like we do for our deputies, and that, that's basically it. There is no age limit, so we have some people older than me there, and I'm old. <laughs> yes, ma'am. nice things to say about the sheriff's department. My family owns a business here in Murphy's. The topic on the on the handout is crime. So that's where I'm going. We have been broken into several times. The sheriff's department has helped us. The last time we didn't call the sheriff's department because there is someone missing here and that would be the district attorney who told the deputy who tracked this person down, broke in twice, tracked them down. DA told them, no, you cannot arrest her. She tested dirty every week in probation. Nothing's done about that. We are out thousands of dollars over the years in merchandise, having to continually build to keep people out. Security systems, when you've got someone's face on camera and you can't get to court, that's where we have a problem. I would like to hear somebody address that. And the DA is not here to do That's her job. It is, but I can, I can cover some of that for you. Let's go back to 2011 when um, Assembly Bill 109 came in. It's got AB 109. That's when they started releasing prisoners early on good behavior. And then in 2014, they brought on the um, uh, Proposition 47. You all remember that? It was called the Safe Schools and Neighborhoods Act. Well, what that Safe Schools and Neighborhoods Act did was it took all Schedule One drugs, methamphetamine, PCP, heroin, cocaine, and made them from a, from a felony to a misdemeanor. Okay? That's what happened. That's what our voters did in 2016 or excuse me, in 14, 2016, Proposition 57 was another way for the state to release more prisoners out of jail on good behavior, okay? Now, let's move forward to 2018, when Governor Newsom says, we're going to start closing prisons, which he has done already, Supreme two Court prisons in California, okay? And then in 2020, when COVID hit, he made us every jail in the state release prisoners and now they have gone so far as to have a no bail program so they're trying to accommodate everybody who can't afford bail so now when we arrest these people the DA doesn't have a whole lot to do with it because they're released per the state of California so I don't want to step on the DA but I need to support them in the fact that there's only so much that they can do the problem is our court system and the system that we have right now with our current governor, he is letting people out of jail and he is closing prisons Excuse so that he can save money. Please keep politics out. Yes, thank That's you. That's not politics. That is not politics. That is reality. You want to know why people are not staying in jail? That is why. That's a fact. The Supreme Court made us close it. Okay, uh, let me take the politics out of it then. Somebody is letting these people out of jail and it's not the sheriff. It's that simple. Yes, sir. Sorry, I did say it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I, we're, we're complaining and we're complaining and we're complaining. Yeah, there's a bunch of crap happening. But you guys, we're, go downtown and, and have your eyes on the, the streets. Yeah. Don't stay home and say, I don't go down there. It's too busy. Go down there, walk the streets. If you see somebody who's getting in their car, it doesn't have to be a shop owner. We're all citizens. We have the right to call the sheriffs and say, guess what? This guy got in his car drunk. If your friend is having a hard time at their store and they're uncomfortable, if you don't want to call 911, have a friend you can text and say, will you call 911 for me right now? You know, I'm too busy, whatever it is. But we all have the opportunity to enjoy
enjoy what we have. We've built an amazing spot, and that's why all of California wants to be here. And yeah, sometimes it's a pain in the butt. Believe me, I can't get out of my driveway <laughs> or my business on the weekends because I live on the highway and my business is on the highway. I get it. But it's beautiful, and I understand we're upset. They keep telling you, call 911. Call it, report it, report it, report it. If we keep reporting it, people are, people are going to come here and they're going to say, hey, don't get drunk because they called the sheriffs and the sheriffs are going to come arrest you. Yeah, let me add a little bit to what Sis is saying. Um, the other thing that you folks can do is for the business owners and even, even for you homeowners, if you don't own a business and you live here in Murphy's, video surveillance is, is just, it does phenomenal things right now and some of the clarity is just, just fantastic. Don't have just video surveillance inside your store or inside your home. Have video surveillance on the outside of your business and on the outside of your home. So we can see the car that they drove up in. So we can see them maybe walking up before they put their hoodie and their gloves on. So enhance yourselves, help yourselves by, by adding to your security systems that you have. It's cheap insurance. The minute a safe with a thousand dollars gets stolen out of your business, that nine hundred or a thousand dollar security system might have just paid for itself. So but if you can't do anything about it because all the stupid state laws, which I understand your hands are tied, yeah. I'm not saying it ain't different, I'm on your side here. Yeah. But the, what the, what the, what's the point? But if I tackle the guy... We're not going to give up. We're going to continue business. to go after him. Yeah. We're going to continue to, to, to get the DA to try and prosecute him. Uh, how many here, by raise your hands, know a young man by the name of Jimmy Blake Terry? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> we put him in jail for eight years. He's out. After a year and a half, almost two years, he's out because of our state programs. Okay, so we will continue to go after these guys. We will continue to put them into jail, and hopefully they get to a point where they get to stay. That's all I can say. But don't give up. Don't, don't say I'm not going to spend $1,000 because I'm going to lose $1,000 because they're not going to do anything. Please do something. Continue to call us so that we can continue to do our job. Our surveillance and the business next to us. I know. I know that, and I understand your frustration. Trust me, we're just as frustrated because we put them in jail and they're back out the back door. A lot of times they're out the door before we even get the report written. But we gotta keep going, so. So I'm, trying, I'm thinking of what Jan Schultz was saying earlier about a fellow that showed up, I'm not a business owner now, and I'm thinking what Sissy said, and yes, we, we have opened a Pandora's box here in Murphy's, and it's so popular. But with all the electronic communication, couldn't the business owners set up, couldn't the business association set up something so when Jan has a, a guy in his shop, he can send out a note that goes to everybody and says, okay, I got a guy in a blue shirt that's causing problems. Because you guys can get right Crime tree. Yeah, that's the okay. crime tree or texting group or the phone tree. So absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I have a question for probably not you. Uh, oh, perfect. So, I'm going to get it off this topic. Everybody seems to be really concentrated on the drunks in our area. And you guys want to get our local citizenship involved in, in protecting our local? How about driving too fast on Main Street? How about you guys sit there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, a few months ago, we had a meeting with uh, Supervisor Calloway here, and some of the business owners, about the speeding issues. Unfortunately, Main Street, to, to, to start making changes, for a lot of you, to start making changes on roadways, they need to get surveyed. They need to go through a, a, a process. They didn't just come in today, um, put a, a, and change the speed laws, uh, put a sidewalk in here. There's, I'm not talking about changing the speed laws. So, so, you know, just like, uh just, just, so, just like you mentioned, um, it would be nice if you were to call and, oh, uh, she's asking about the speeders uh, on Main Street, pretty, pretty much throughout the whole time, right? And, and, oh, the, the locals that are speeding themselves here. Um, 
So there's already been a couple times that I've already told my staff, go to Murphy's every time that Supervisor Callaway that you guys uh, bring up any issues to her, she'll let me know. She communicates with me, and I'll tell my staff and the supervisors, send patrol cars to Murphy's. I actually had them come out here uh, looking for speeders. They sat here for an hour, and there was really no traffic. So it's kind of hard. I need to find out what time, what dates. Like you said, the weekends for the DUIs. I'm going to go ahead this weekend, or I'm going to tell my staff come at these certain times. I need to know the times. They can happen all day. I get that. Leaving out of town here uh, on Murphy's, I mean, it's 35, but people speed out there thinking it's 55, but that's posted. But it would be nice to, if you guys have a specific date and time or a vehicle that's the uh, repeat offender or the local offender, please call our office. We'll generate a traffic complaint. That way we can hold our people accountable that they're actually coming to work this speed complaint at a certain time that the issue is occurring. Um, just like uh, the sheriff said, we're all shorthanded. Statewide law enforcement is shorthanded. Uh, the, the Highway Patrol ourselves, we haven't. Uh, we just graduated our first class uh, in about a year and a half, and we have a new class coming in, and we have a lot of retirements that we're trying to just keep up with attrition. We don't have the bodies. I have a retirement here that I, I won't even get a body probably until next year. I have a couple injuries. I'm shorthanded. I'm sending people to the Tamarack Fire to help out over there. So the, the people that are working, I, 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 I hold them accountable because I kind of, like I mentioned earlier about our vision of making California the safest place to work, travel, and live. They, a lot of our officers live in this community here in, the, in, the, in here in Calaveras County, so they owe it to themselves to go out and do their job and patrol to make the roadway safer. Uh, this year alone, we've had uh, 11 fatalities already in Calaveras County. We had 10 last year, and we're not even, we're just halfway, and that's unfortunate. These fatalities are very, it's very sad to tell a family member that they lost a family member on the roadway, and it's happening. But even here it can happen, right? A pedestrian could come out or a kid gets hit, struck by a vehicle, it happens, or a bicyclist. So what I encourage is if you guys have issues, please call the office. How many, how many actually have called the office here and, and, and generated a traffic complaint? That's an option you guys have. So if there's an issue in a certain area, call the office and say, hey, I have an issue. Uh, this is what's happening. This is the vehicle or these are the same vehicles between 8 and 3 or, or whatever. I, that way I can disseminate the traffic complaint to the appropriate shifts to see if they can uh, identify and stop the problem. The sidewalk, that's all the, that's what the, um, Marita's supposed to take care of the sidewalk? Well, the, well that's all the, yeah. the yeah. I can't build a, a sidewalk on, on a county roadway. Oh, okay, she had a question. Hi, um, Jessica, I live on Main Street, and, um, I am, I, my house is around the direction by French Bolt, and, um, it's not an hour of the day, it's not a day of the week, and it is locals that are speeding, and it's repeat offenders, and, um, I called numerous times since I bought my house seven months ago. Um, I invite anybody to come sit on my front porch for any given 20 minutes and you're going to catch somebody going 55 miles an hour. Um, they tend to accelerate past um, kind of pop the bubbly area. And it's any day of the week, it's any time of day. Um, I totally respect the fact that you guys are short staffed and it would be a waste of resources for somebody to be sitting on the side of the road there waiting to give a ticket. But what can we do to come up with a solution? Um, can we do speed bumps? I was told that we can't do speed bumps because of snow plows or something. So can we do speed dips? Um, if it's a lack of, of lack of funding, I will personally pay for the speed bumps or speed dips. Um, I've got a 12-year-old son with special needs. I can't even send him out of my house to walk to get a Joma's ice cream because I'm terrified he's going to get hit by a car. So what can we do to solve this problem? If it's funding, I will pay for them. Uh, you know, if we can't if we can't have a patrol sitting there. What can we do as a community before somebody literally gets run over by car? That's, that's that. my yeah. question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Supervisor Calloway and I will try to hopefully address this, but um, it's it's just not. Um, that's a county roadway, so that's all county roadway uh, engineering. Um, three years in the making. Three years in the making. We already went through this meeting to to get come down here and survey, and just like. I'll give you an example. One thing that there was a question here was about the uh, the turn lane that they're building on, on State Route 4. That project, I just reached out to Caltrans. It's uh, on track. It should hopefully by November be completed. But those are things that also that went way in advance. Get the engineer and get this turn lane. Is it worth it? That's a state route. County roadway all comes down to county roads and what, what they what they want to do. So she maybe can um, answer this. Okay, did we... I've offered before we put up the speed radar signs, you know, it, but it's only as good as when it's up there. Yeah. Um, I, can she get it in front of her house? Can she request it in front of her house? It, it, to, it can be near there. Yeah, we put it down at that end, we put it at the other end of town, but it's only as good as when it's there. 
as soon as it's gone, the issues that Jessica's talking about will still continue. The only thing that stops the speeder is a black and white. And as, well, I do not, I would not want a dip. I would not want a speed bump in front of my house. They're very noisy. Um, they're high liability for the taxpayers to have them. So, because people are speeding up, they're going, bicycles will fall, they, they set up an expectation. Usually you see your speed bumps in um, malls and shopping malls. You don't usually see them, at least my experience, and uh, the lieutenant can, he can't correct me, but he, um, and you can't either. So, um, we don't support the speed bumps. We've had suggestions of having mobile speed bumps. But yep. you Camera definitely, tickets. the other option that I gave the Murphy's Business Association was to put up a permanent um, speed sign, you know, that's run by um, solar. solar. Yes, thank you. And they cost about two to three thousand dollars. That's continual, but that's a lot of money. Um, and if the community wants it, uh, we can see if we will put it in for you, but the taxpayers won't pay for it. So that's another option that they could do at both ends of town, because it happens at the other end of town also, as well as the, um, the south end of town. Yes, sir. That's kind of, how can the city of Stockton can put speed bumps on residential streets? I don't know. I don't know how the city of Stockton does. There's a lot of them, and it's slowed the traffic down. Well, that's, that's fine. That's a different government. Calaveras County isn't going to do it. Um, the sidewalks, I... Right, okay. No, I understand. I get that a lot. Okay, you have a crosswalk at the intersection of Snack and the hotel. And so the... No, the other Oh, are you talking at the four-way stop? Okay, we've, t we've looked at that probably 10 different ways. You have to have a crosswalk that, that can be visible and then people can stop, but if they stop, they have to stop um, correct me if I'm wrong, they have to stop before they get to the crosswalk, so the stop sign, so the person will be stopping way back, because the intersection at the four-way is not, is not a perfect 90, it's skewed, that intersection is skewed, uh, plus we have the, they have to be handicapped accessible, we've looked at it, and we'd like to put a crosswalk in there. Can I say sure. Can I say Just so you know, state of California, read your driver's handbook. Any uh, intersection is a designated crosswalk. You don't have to physically have the paint on the ground. Okay, I'd like you to go and walk around Murphy several months. I have. They don't. They tried to hit me, and I'm in uniform, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I'm just telling you that any intersection, like a Church Street, has a, there's a designated crosswalk there. Anywhere there's an intersection, you can legally cross, but you can't always put crosswalks. It goes back to, you have to have the survey done, and it takes about three years. So basically what I'm hearing is we're not working. That's no, that's true. not a true statement. See, now, now that's that Facebook that's, rumor mill that's going on. That's not true. But, that, but you're making a statement that is very untrue. Um, I'm going to, I want to switch gears for a minute because we've asked Dr. Ramirez to come up. Uh, Gina, I'll get to you in a moment um, to talk about the status of COVID in our county. And what's that? Why? It has nothing to do with crime or rumors in this town. No, I'm sorry. We have been, we have asked. Okay, I mean that's fine. You, okay. Go ahead. Yes. But we're not done. Good morning, Murphy. Hello, Calaveras County. My name is Ramirez Ramirez. 
from the public health officer. Versus the statement earlier says, might not be worth it. I think everybody here is worth a little time for COVID. If anybody's paid attention to the news lately, we've seen that there have been some rates and states going up with COVID. There's a lot of people, a lot of good people that I could see here today, a lot of community support. A lot of people have touted around lots of words that I've written down. Let's see here, we got um, common sense. Common sense, a lot of people use the term common sense. There's a lot here where people has a lot of frustration. And I can tell you that the public health sector, physicians, nurses, people in healthcare, share a yeah. lot of the same frustration that you all are sharing here today. Where your frustration is focused on crime with my predecessors here, my frustration is focused on a lot of people who don't want to use their own terms of common sense. So, infection spreads. There are a lot of people who can get sick. This is not something, COVID is not something that we can just ignore. I've heard a lot of rumors, social media, rumor mills, you know, law enforcement here is saying that. On the health part, we also have to battle those rumor mills and social media. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of people on Murphy's are saying, hey, why should I care about this? It doesn't uh, affect my community very much. But yet, on the same token, you guys are talking about people coming in from the valley, from throughout the state. So if you're using your common sense, could you say that people are bringing some COVID into your counties? All right, that's why I'm here today. So our vaccination rate, well, before I get there, everybody here was talking about what can you do for your community? And then people were asking, well, what can the community do for us? I'm here to bridge those two. There's a lot of COVID dollars that are out there, and there's a lot of help that our law enforcement needs. It would be really nice if we could blend the two together in some way, shape, or form. We can think outside the box. And if we could all help each other, I think that would really fix a lot of our problems instead of us pointing fingers at each other. Right? Well, I'm also gonna tell you, I can't teach you something you already know. That's what I tell my kids all the time. So I know there's people here that are like, don't care what he has to say, I've already made up my mind. And that's okay, I respect that. But I'm gonna ask you to respect my time for these next few minutes. So, to address your questions, what is the vaccination rate in Calaveras? Well, Approximately 40% of people of the entire population is currently vaccinated. It's kind of low. Some people say, well, why do I care? I don't believe in a vaccine. Well, I'm sorry. But we in Calaveras have about a fatality rate of about 2.5% thus far. Well, that's a low number. Well, let's do some simple math. 50,000 people in Calaveras County. More or less. What's 2.5% of 50,000 people? 1,250. How many people are here today? About 120? I'm gonna ask you guys, how many coughs and sneezes have you heard? How many people have you guys seen pull out cough drops while you're here? I'll tell you right now, I've counted about 20 coughs, sneezes, touching your face, rubbing your eye, rubbing your nose. That is how infection spreads. 1,250 people, possible 2.5% current death rate. That's a lot of people. 40% total vaccination rate for the entire county. Now, that number is tricky. That number is tricky because not everybody is eligible for the vaccine at this time. There are some people, I heard somebody mention about a speed bump and somebody with special needs and you know being afraid of them being into a certain roadway. Well, common sense might say, put a sheriff substation there. Well, if we can't do that, put a volunteer network there. Put something there. I wanna get rid of COVID. I am just as frustrated as you all are with many things. We hear the difference between me talking and the politics they may be is that each and every person here can help get rid of COVID. 
the naysayers, the people who say, why do I care? Those are the people who are going to perpetuate COVID. That's the bottom line. So until we get to a higher percentage of vaccination rates or a lower percentage of infection, because I'm not here to hide anything from you. There's three ways to get rid of COVID. Three ways. There's vaccines. There's distancing, which nobody's doing here today. And there's masking, which are a few people doing. Thank you. I went to, uh, I saw this picture in Hawaii recently. And it says, I wear my mask in public for three reasons. Now, Hawaii is interesting. Hawaii is a beautiful state. A lot of beautiful people. A lot of people here from California and the world go to Hawaii for vacation. Now, in order to get to Hawaii, who here has been to Hawaii recently? Not everybody has to show their hands, but it's, it's a bit of a task. You have to quarantine, which who would want to do if they're going to Hawaii? It just doesn't make sense. But they'll find you. They will find you, and they will find you. And their law enforcement and their public health officials, they will help to make sure that that happens because they want to keep their beautiful state healthy. So throughout Hawaii, there's these signs that say, I wear my mask in public for three reasons. Number one, humility. I don't know if I have COVID-19. People can spread the disease before they have symptoms. Do you guys know what our current asymptomatic rate is from the data I just got on Friday? It's 10%. 10% of people who tested positive that we interviewed in the public health department were asymptomatic. Well, about 120 people. How many people is that here in the audience? It's more than one. I heard our law enforcement earlier use the, uh, you know, say when it comes to crime, that one person is too many. Well, I feel the same way from the health aspect. One person is too many. One person being sick, that's days away from your family, from work, from your freedom. Number two, I wear my mask in public for kindness. Well, there's a lot of overlap there and hopefully that resonates with every discussion that's been had thus far, kindness. If we could just all treat each other a little kinder, if we could be more sensitive for others, if we could change our actions for the benefit, not just ourselves, but for the benefit of others, that's what kindness is. I don't know if the person I am near has a child battling cancer or cares for their elderly mom. While I might be fine, they might not. Number three, community. Well, I don't live here in Murphy's or in Calaveras County, but I can very quickly get a sense of community here today. You guys all know each other very well. I'm from a small town in Kerman where we all know each other too. Our parents know each other's parents, knows each other's grandmas, grandpas for generations. And so I can relate on that aspect. And we all might have differences and opinions but I think when it comes to a sense of community, we can all get on the same page for a little bit so that it can benefit our community. So it says, I wear my mask in public because I want my community to thrive, businesses to stay open, and employees to stay healthy. Keeping a lid on COVID-19 helps us all. So, is the Delta variant showing in Calaveras County? Yes, it is. The data shows us that it's been here since March. Unfortunately, the state didn't report it in March. Can't blame them because everything's happening in real time, right? They reported in June. We had cases in March. Two weeks ago, the CDC announced that about 50% of every COVID case in the US was attributed to the Delta variant. Well, why do I care? Well, there's Alpha, Beta, Delta, there's a Lambda variant. But what we are seeing is that with each variant comes more and more virulence. So the concern with the Delta variant is it's not going to necessarily kill you right now. That's not, that's not what we're here to do. We're not here to instill fear. What we are here to do is to educate everybody. And the Delta variant is known to have about a thousand more times virulence 
than the other variants thus far. So that means that these coughs and sneezes and sniffles and rubbing eyes, touching noses that I've seen here in this small community, that you are now, congratulations, we're no longer at 50% of COVID positivity of the Delta, with the Delta variant, we're now in the 80%. So 80% of people who have COVID now have the Delta variant. So that just means that it's gonna spread more and more. Well, guess what? Schools aren't even open yet, it's still summertime. Who's that population that unfortunately is not eligible just yet? Our kids. And if we can't even get our adults to get on the same page to get vaccinated, who are we gonna protect? Yes. Mm -hmm. There. So. It's bad for children. I work for Stanford, and they told us not to ever, ever put a mask on a Under two, you don't wear a mask. Well, if you look at every on, under two, you don't wear a mask. If you look at every prescription medication. There is a list of everything you can do. Every one of them says nothing under the age of 12. I'm not now, here to debate. I'm here to educate. So if you want to use that logic, your three, that's fine. The three options are we can separate, Close the we can wear masks, or we can vaccinate. That is the idea behind the herd community. So if we're only at, if we're only at 40% of the entire population being vaccinated, if we could get that number up, then we wouldn't even have to wear masks. Murphy's and Arnold tired though, right? Murphy's and Arnold, Arnold. So I'm, just, I'm talking specifically okay. for Calaveras County. So the of the people that are eligible, the vaccination rate is 45%. Okay. So the Delta variant, the current vaccination rate, and then what can we do to help? So vaccines are very effective. Distancing is obviously very effective, but we're, we're a community. We don't like to be distanced, to be isolated. We like to be together. We like to gather. We like to travel. So that leaves two options left. You either mask or you vaccinate. If there are any restrictions imposed, is the county able to address non-compliance? So I'm not the county. I'm in the public health sector. I will defer that question to Supervisor Calloway and the rest of the county officers here. But we are following the guidance of California, and that is beyond the blueprint. So at this time, they're recommending to mask, vaccinate, or distance. Any other questions? No, on distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. 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 Okay. Um, a question's been asked about the sidewalks in Murphy's. I get that a lot. And I just had someone email me and tell me, in fact, I think I saw her here, yes. A trip, if, if that, if there's something that we, we, remember it's taxpayers' money, can do to repair, we will do that. Um, I was asked about the sidewalks in front of the hotel. They look really nice. Well, the hotel paid to put them in. So, pardon? You, you just, just can't, can't walk. walk. In high heels. <laughs> So it's not that we wouldn't like to maybe repair all the sidewalks. There just isn't the funding to repair all the sidewalks. But if there's things we can do, we will do it. I want to get back to something. Lauren, did you have something you wanted to? We're on sidewalks. I, I'm not done with speeding. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're, I'm not sure where. Um, oh, we'll get back to that. <laughs> Okay, so the speed, just to piggyback on what you said, speed signs, we can put one in at either end of town, the mobile ones, you just let me know, and we can put them out. Again, they're just a temporary solution, and maybe that's all we can do now. If you want a, per uh, if you want a permanent one, then coming up with the funding to buy one, then the county will help pick the location to install that. Um, just a minute. Yes, ma'am. Right. 
can't hear it. You mean they go down Church Street? No. On Rocky Hill? Well, you can make the request and we can talk to the truckers, the trucking industry, which we did for Highway 4, going over the Utica, I mean, going over Ebbets Pass. If they do, well, we can talk to, go ahead. Sorry, I had to go to the restroom. I kind of missed the question, but is this about commercial vehicle traffic enforcement? It's not just commercial vehicles. She said they're going on Okay, so... I live on Rocky Hill, and that's not true. So the same thing, if, if what I'm going to tell everybody here, if you guys are ready, or at least look it up, or just call the uh, our area office. I'll give, I'll, I'll give the number one so you can just Google it when you get home. But the area office for us is 209-754. So 754-3541. Our office is open 8 to 5 to the public. You let them know what, ta what type of traffic complaint you have so we can log it and actually work the complaint. Um, if there's commercial vehicles involved, I can get our commercial vehicle trucks that come work the Murphy's platform. If there's certain, if there's a certain day that these uh, big rig trucks or the logging trucks or gravel trucks, if they're or they're oversized on State Route Four, they'll come and enforce that. So if you see that, please let us know, and I'll pass that on to our commercial. Uh, the, the, the MRE trucks, you ever see the trucks that are out here? Okay, so please call, call call the office. Just generate a traffic complaint so we can know the times, the vehicle descriptions, so we can get the people out there. Okay, same again. That's that's I mean that's news to me. But if, if you call and we file a traffic complaint, we will brief it to our guys during briefing where they go out before we have our day shifts, we shifts, baby, our briefings. Our sergeants, supervisors will tell, hey, this is your assignment, your patrol, your beat. There's a traffic complaint. Go work it. And we log in what kind of, what kind of activity actually happened during those hours. Ma'am? Um, I want to continue the speeding issue that was brought up earlier. Um, I know speeding on Main Street and in Murphy's in general is, is a pretty big issue. It's a really big issue on Highway 4. Um, and and I, from, from all the conversation, I, I understand that you're short-staffed, so we're not going to get somebody to be more present. I, like most of this community, am on Highway 4 every day. I don't see any presence. The only presence I ever see is at the way station. But I don't see any other presence. I can't remember the last time I saw somebody get pulled over. People fly through this town. I, like Sissy and others, live on the highway. We know what's happening. So given that we don't have the manpower, can we invest in some cameras that just start taking pictures and issuing tickets? Why couldn't we do that in various locations? Not necessarily at the stoplight, but kind of bookending the town because it's happening all the time. We'll go for a walk and cross over to Apple Blossom, and we have to wait because there's so much traffic, and by the time they hit that 45 mile an hour sign, they're doing 65. And this isn't at one time a day, it's morning, noon, and night. I, 
I know this is a lot to put on you, but we need to find solutions. And it seems to me if people started getting tickets all the time, they slow down. We're not enforcing the speed limits that we have. I've already talked to Caltrans. They already have a study started because I want I want some changes in the speed limits. But that's going to, as you say, take three years. Is it possible for us to install some cameras and start issuing tickets? And would that be any revenue for our community? No, fortunately, uh, nowhere in the state do they have on state roadways uh, anything like this. Um, I know in some cities they kind of have the red light, but then there's an issue with the courts, uh, who's who's enforcing it. So that, that's that's a whole different issue. As far as, like you, you mentioned me, I'm sorry that you didn't see any patrol cars, but our officers, when they go out, when they leave the office, the officer that works this area, he'll come, they're required to check their beat at the beginning and the end of shift to make sure everybody's broken down and needs service. But I'll give you an example. If the officer that's working the State Route 4 corridor gets a call out there in Copper or a cow call on pool station, and now he's got to deal with a, a cow for two hours until they secure this cow or get the or, or whatever it, it call is, right. you don't have the patrolling out here on State Route 4. Right. Once he clears that call, then he's got to come back and check the, the, the beat. So he can't be out here the whole time. They have a lot of area to cover, but they go and they'll take the appropriate enforcement action whenever they see a violation. Well, but because we're shorthanded, violations are not being seen are doing double, double line passing. It happened to me this morning coming back from Angels. So we're shorthanded. I'm trying to offer a solution. Do you have other solutions that we can really effectively deal with our traffic problem, our speeding issue in this community? Just, if you, if you, Will someone have to die before we change something? Die. Okay. Um, I think some of these are challenges that I can work with the CHP on. We have a resident CHP officer who I see up and down the corridor a lot. But I want to get, yes, sir. I have a specific question about the street. Short street, obviously, is the street that you have to go through. Correct. Those, those are, there are no, no parking signs on Church Street, and that's a county road, and that's public parking. But I think it's a red curb. Out is there a red curb? If there's a red curb, then that's ticketed. There's no curb. They park on the wine. With the winery in front and the beer. Oh, the beer. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I don't agree with what we did. I thought it was over. My, we can put up no parking zones. And, and I know I'm very familiar with Church Street. I've walked it innumerable times because people wanted Main Street closed, and that meant all the traffic would have gone on Church Street. People on Church Street didn't want it. We also have the Masonic Lodge that's closed off their parking. That's my issue. So, so, I mean, if, I'm sorry, why? Because it's public parking, they're allowed to park there. Unless there's signs designated no parking, or it's a red zone, they can park there. I, why don't I go look, I will go look at that with you and so I can understand more of what you're talking about. Eric? Speak up, Eric.
Memphis is double. Angel's camp is double. These gentlemen up here are doing a hell of a job considering the situation. Oh, for sure. Woohoo! Now, Joe. I, live, I live on Main Street. I've been here over 20 years. It's a racetrack for locals. Okay. It's a what? Uh, years, racetrack. Race track. Track. There oh. a dog jump weekend because the business association wanted it. The first five people they pulled over were locals speeding down Main Street. <laughs> so my suggestion is be a good neighbor. Talk to your neighbors who have kids. Yeah. Okay. I'm very familiar with Church Street. I live on Church in Maine and Rocky Hill. That's my corner. Okay. When those when those people that own that business kick that fence down, people started parking on their lawn and thinking it was parking. Let's talk to the business owners, guys. Let's talk to each other as a community. Okay. I live here. I'll be here a lot longer than a lot of you. I'm young. <laughs> a lot of people thought they'd be here a lot longer. My husband just died, but he'd be here forever. I'm in this town. I got a tally book. My tally book is, if they're minors, I find out when their birthday is. Because I'm going to be their new uncle when they turn 18. And that's the truth. With my kids, and I'll be here, my wife will be here a long time. Okay, my wife's family has been here for a few years, probably 1875. Okay, my family's only been here since about 45. So, anyways, I'm just telling you, talk to one another. Because we've got to be neighbors, you guys. I don't care what side of the wall you're on as far as politics. Talk to each other, okay? If you want to, you know what, talk to public works. They're good people to talk to. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I have better luck talking to public works than talking to anybody above them. Talk to who's in charge of public works. They see what's going on in the community. They see our problems. I've gotten red zones put in the day they were putting in red zones in other areas. I can't get out of my driveway on a busy weekend. They were nice enough to put some red zones in so I could actually get out of my driveway. Talk to those people, communicate, okay? Some of you are retired, that's awesome. Man, be a squeaky wheel. <laughs> Call them. Now I'm gonna back up a little bit on the sidewalk situation. I sit on the water board. There's water lines under a lot of those areas where you guys see bad asphalt, okay? Public Works will work with you. You will pay for it yourselves. They'll tell you how to do it. This is possible. Okay, I know. I, I have a crummy sidewalk in front of my house. Um, you'll have to pay for it. They'll tell you how to do it. If they got to dig it up and dig the water line up. It's on you. It's not on the, on, on the water. Field. I can guarantee it. We're not, we're not super rich either. So that's another thing to address. I think because of the population growth in our county, it ought to be on the top of the list, law enforcement, to bring in more deputies because there's more income tax in this county now in the last year and a half, eight years. Yeah. There's going to be a little delay in all that money coming in. That's something to think about. It's easy to complain right now, but until the money's counted, I think it ought to be a priority. Rick doing a hell of a job. We grew up in a community that had two and a half million people. You know, Rick knows a good side. And Marita. I grew up in first club. Okay? So thank you. I appreciate it. CHD, great job. I'll talk to the young person. Thank you, sir. I don't want to come out of my driveway on Main Street and hot rod down the street. They're going to do it one time. That's it. Um, okay. There's a lot of poor cool parenting going on in the community. I hope to be that person. I'm 18. I'll be that guy. I won't. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. This gentleman over here. Uh, walking around the street Oh, I'm sorry. Questions directed towards the sheriff's department. Is it truth or myth that the sheriff's department does not do radar? <laughs> It's not a myth, it's a fact. We don't have any radar within our cars. Oh. It's funding, it's training, and primary responsibility. We have it everywhere else. Not in, not in most sheriff cars. Most sheriff cars. You you we need a lot of things. I know. That's a, that's a lot of traffic cars. That's a lot of deaths out there. Like Sacramento. Yeah. And uh, I'll let the CHP speak to how many percentage of their cars have it, but I know not every CHP car has it also. It's, it's, it comes down I to. See speed traps, and I tell you, I have never seen. I can tell you how many cars I have pulled over because I hate crossing over the double yellow. 
That's, That's my number one pet peeve. Right on the head. Crossing, yeah. Turn, to put it in perspective, I've had people pass me in a marked car yeah. over double lines. Wow. It's happened three times in a marked car. Yeah, I pulled him over, gave him a ticket. <laughs> so just to... Uh, That's yeah. All right. Yes, ma'am. frustrations also. We can look those numbers up yeah. and we'll give it to the Murphy's Business Association to distribute that. Yeah. So, so part of the part of the meeting today is we know our commitment to the community and our interaction with the community. What we're doing today is dispelling rumors and building a relationship. Um, we work very hard every day to earn your trust and keep it. So part of this back and forth, we don't take it as a negative. We can always do things better. There's always a different way. You th see things differently than we do. We want you educated. We want you knowing the facts. We want you knowing what your rights and rules are, and we're here to enforce them, and we want to have an open dialogue with you guys. So the fact that a lot of people didn't know some of these truths, maybe are bad for not communicating as much, maybe we should have this every quarter. Maybe we should have a, a, a community meeting every quarter, maybe not the winner, but we should do this every quarter and get together and just talk and, yeah. and share that open line of communication. That's what I'm offering. Is that a recent crime? Has it been solved? Because I do live in town, and so I'm kind of just wondering, am I... Which crime are we talking about? The, about the home invasion or whatever that was. Because I just... We talked about that earlier. It has yeah. been investigated. It's been, okay, so, so somebody living in town like I do, I should be... I, I mean, I lock everything, but the one thing I wasn't locking was the door into, you know, the kitchen from the garage. So, I mean, everything... Just, so, so universal precautions, you should lock your doors and windows every night. That's not the world. We don't live in we the world. We don't here. I've lived well, in 50 years, yeah. yeah I, I have know, a friend that... I know. Friend leaves his keys in the car when he pulls in his driveway. I told him, don't call him when your car gets stolen. Yeah, if you're going to be that blatant about it, don't cry when somebody steals but your car. But even going out to the garbage at night. I mean, should we be... you, got, you got to lock your doors and windows to have security systems. That's the world we live in. Yeah, but night. I mean, this crime has not been solved, right? It has not been solved, but okay. it's actively being investigated. Somebody else had... on Main Street also could be uh, uh, assisted by, and maybe you already do it, uh, aggressive enforcement of not parking on or over the fog line and uh, jaywalking because often intoxicated visitors darting out from between cars that are right next to the lane of travel. That's a real hazard and I wonder if we're enforcing those two things aggressively. So during the extra toll, if we drive through, if we see something obvious, we, we handle it. Getting back to what we originally had this on the crime, there was a 17-year-old kid popped in Angels with a stolen vehicle, with the guy's driver's license. How come the kid was turned loose? So he wasn't turned loose. The case was... He was at Avery's graduation that night. So there's a difference between turn loose being... When you say turn loose, it means we didn't do anything. We just let him go. See you later. Bye-bye. That's not what happened. Mama took him home. Well, juvenile crimes... Let me finish. Don't throw your hands up. Let me explain. So when a juvenile commits a crime, we have to outsource with an outside juvenile hall. Okay? There's bed spaces, limited bed spaces. So that person, the case was given to juvenile probation. They handled the case. He served, he's going through that process. I'll let them talk about it. But with juveniles, we're not going to take a juvenile for that crime 
and put them in juvenile hall, that means they got to take somebody out of that juvenile hall who committed a serious crime, or maybe they shot somebody or stabbed somebody and put that person on the street. We make hard decisions. And the hard decision was that person doesn't kick somebody else out who's more violent. That's a hard decision to make. We make those all the time. Is it, is it right? Do we enjoy that? Absolutely not. Would I like to see that kid, when he steals a car, serve all his time and stay inside? Absolutely I would. But our hard decisions are, do we let a kid that stole a car go home with his parents with a citation to face further adjudication later, or do we take somebody who actively harms somebody and will harm somebody again and put them on the street? What would you do? I went to school. And what would you do? Junior, well, like I said, go back to the 50s and that. You can't turn back that far. You're not in the 50s. They didn't that even go to the high schools 16, for fights. You can't do that anymore. We don't I, do that. Have, I can't even have a juvenile around an adult. Seriously. No, no. We, we can't. There, we, there's certain ages we can't even question can't without the law. Not black and white no more. No. Well, it is black and white. You don't do this. Right. <laughs> Pretty simple. In a perfect world, I would be out of a job. These guys have to come to the high school now for a fight. They never did that when you were a kid. I know that for sure. That's a fact. And that's a fact. And then kids get records so for bet? fights. Did you have the cops in high school? Uh, we're, we're, we're constantly. Really? Okay. Well, it's about time to wrap it up. The congregation's leaving. But I want to address one thing that I get asked quite a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Duly noted. I want to address one thing before we put some closure on this. Are the uh, restaurants or businesses that are on Main Street? And I get asked a lot, well, why are they there? When are they going? It was at this time a year ago, if we can all go back to a year, when our businesses were told that all you can do is have pickup that you cannot be open, you cannot have people in your business, and then it went to 25% and so forth. The agreement with the businesses was that you could move into public space as long as there was the health order and executive order out there. That was the agreement with the businesses. The permits didn't cost them anything. They knew they had to indemnify the county the taxpayers of Calaveras, and that was the agreement. So as long as that health order and executive order are in place, the businesses will be allowed to stay on Main Street. So that was a way to help support our local businesses and let them stay in businesses and stay in business. Times have changed, but as Dr. Ramirez talked about, the case count is going up in Calaveras County. I can't tell you what will be happening if masks will be mandated uh, sometime in the future. We'll go back to where we were almost a year ago. But until that agreement that we had, we, the county, had with the businesses, they will be allowed to stay on Main Street. An agreement is an agreement for me. So the only person we haven't talked to is our juvenile probation supervisor, and he's just fine with that. <laughs> but, if, um, 
Benny's a longtime uh, Calaveras County probation officer, but uh, all of us will be here for uh, a short time after the meeting if there's specific things that you would like to talk about. Oh, I do have one more. Isn't that Colombo? Oh, there's one more thing. <laughs> Is a substation. If there are members of the community, and I know Jim <coughs> Schultz is one of them, would like to consider the options of having a substation, we could meet, we could put a group together, we could meet, and we can make a, pres a presentation to the sheriff's office. So um, if you're interested, contact Jan, and then Jan can work with me. And Lieutenant Stark will be part of the process too. Thank you. Okay, if there's nothing else, um, I'm going to turn the meeting back. Real quick, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Dan Bunce. I'm on the board of the community club, and I'm also your new District 3 representative for the Calaveras Fish and Game Commission. So if you have any um, questions concerning fish and game issues, I'll be here after the meeting, or I'm around town a lot. I'm pretty visible, so I'm here. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you all for coming. One last question, final, final. This Thank you for blowing up my emails. Uh, you can stop now. But, uh, we will have more uh, town hall meetings in the future. We'll try to get them at different times so that everybody can attend. But I want to thank the Sheriff's Department, the CHP, the Health Department, and everybody else who works hard every day to keep our county safe. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>